In this problem, a massless rod of length L lies at rest on a frictionless horizontal surface. A mass m is attached to its lower right end, as shown in the figure. Another mass m moves with a speed v, like this, and collides with the rod and sticks to it, forming a dumbbell. Find for just after the collision. Angular velocity of the dumbbell and velocity of the lower right mass. So, taking this situation as the initial situation before collision. So, this is the before collision situation. Let us draw the diagram for the situation just after the collision. So, this is the situation just after the collision. This mass is stick here and this mass is here and this is the center of mass of this complete system since rod has no mass and this has mass m and this is mass m. So, center of mass will be at the midpoint L by 2 and L by 2 from here. Let us assume the velocity of center of mass is Vcm and since it is going like this, so omega is something like this, omega will be clockwise. I am assuming the velocity of center of mass in the horizontal direction since the only momentum initially in, is in the horizontal direction. If we want to calculate the Vcm and omega, we can apply first concept I am applying conservation of angular conservation of linear momentum. Since there is no external force on this complete system, system of rod plus this mass and this mass, there is no external force or external impulse, we can apply the conservation of linear momentum and obviously we are applying in this direction, the direction which is shown from this dotted line. V is also along this dotted line which is at angle 45 degree. So, the rod is at the angle 45 degree. Final momentum is equal to initial momentum. Final momentum, total mass of the system multiplied by velocity of center of mass of the system and this is initially mv. So, Vcm will come out as V by 2. So, center of mass of this system will move with velocity V by 2. Now, for omega, since there is no external impulse, we can apply the conservation of angular momentum also. So, there is no impulse, there is no angular impulse. Conservation of angular momentum. And I am applying this about the center of mass of the system, about the center of mass. L final is equal to L initial. Since the motion of rod just after collision is combined at translational and rotation, so I have to add the rotational and the translational angular momentum. The translational angular momentum about center of mass since velocity is passing through this point will be 0 and the only term will come in the picture will be ICM into omega. So, L final is only ICM multiplied by omega and L initial will be due to this particle only and this perpendicular distance from here obviously this angle is also 45. So, this is L by 2 and this is L by 2 root 2. So, initial mv l by 2 root 2, we have to find ICM, moment of inertia of the system about axis passing through this center of mass axis. So, ICM, these are two point masses, so it will be m and distance is l by 2, l by 2 square. Again, for this particle also, it will be m into l by 2 square multiplied with omega mv l by 2 root 2 it will be ml square by 4 plus ml square by 4 it will be ml square by 2 so finally it is ml square by 2 1 m is cancelled and this 2 will be cancelled and omega will come out as v by root 2 l so, this is the final angular velocity just after the collision.
and this is the velocity of center of mass if we have to find the velocity of this point so velocity of this point will be resultant of velocity due to linear motion of the rod and due to angular motion of the rod so we have to add the two vectors to find the net velocity of this point so let us find the net velocity of this lower point this is the rod this velocity is v by 2 due to linear motion and due to rotational motion of this uh, rod it will be omega into l by 2 and it will be in this direction so this is omega into l by 2 distance this distance is l by 2 we have to find the resultant omega into l this will be v by root 2 so this omega l by 2 this velocity will be we have to find the resultant of these two values v by 2 and omega l by 2 will be v by 2 root 2 and uh, this angle here this angle is 45 degree and this omega l by 2 is perpendicular to the road this angle is also 45 this angle is 180 minus 45 so this angle is 45 taking components of this v by 2 root 2 let us uh, taking take the components of this v by 2 this is the direction of rod i am taking the component of this v by 2 perpendicular to the rod and along the rod all the angles will be 45 degree so this will be v by 2 root 2 and this will be v by 2 root 2 you can see these two are cancelled and the only velocity which remains is v by 2 root 2 so net velocity is along the length of the rod v by 2 root 2 we can also do this problem by a different approach let us discuss that approach uh, the method number two for this problem the rod is initially in this situation when this particle strikes to the rod it this particle applies some impulse on the rod and this impulse or force can have two components one can be perpendicular to the rod that is f perpendicular and one can be along this rod that is f parallel so this is the force applied by this particle on the rod the rod will also apply the same forces on this particle the f perpendicular and f parallel opposite in the opposite direction this rod will also apply the force on this particle we have to consider that the rod is massless if the rod is massless mass is equal to zero so net force on the rod this must be equal to zero and also the moment of inertia is also zero so net torque on the rod must be equal to zero so net force on the rod must be equal to zero net torque on the rod must be equal to zero so if there is force on this rod like this on the other end of this rod this force should be opposite f perpendicular and f parallel should be like this rod will apply these forces on this particle also so f parallel will be like this and f perpendicular will be like this so net force on the rod is zero this and this this and this are cancelled this f perpendicular and this f perpendicular is cancelled now coming to the net torque so net torque should also be zero there is no torque of f parallel on this road about the center of mass but this and this will apply a force couple and these forces will rotate the rod like this and there cannot be no net torque so this these forces are producing the net torque on the rod so for net torque is equal to zero f perpendicular forces should also be zero so forces on the rod 
possible are only f parallel so we come to a very important conclusion that on a or a light rod can only apply a light rod can only apply force along its length only along its length only it cannot apply any force perpendicular to its length so there are only f parallel if there is any impulse applied by the rod this will be parallel to the rod only now coming back to the problem this particle is coming like this velocity of the particle is v let us take the components of this velocity perpendicular to the rod and along the length of the rod and these components are v by root 2 and v by root 2 and this particle is attached to the rod initially now since this rod can only exert the force along the rod only so this velocity after the collision will remain unchanged and since along the length of the rod both the velocities should be equal so after the collision we can see from here that this particle will have its velocity unchanged perpendicular to the rod and let us suppose that velocity in this direction is v1 and this particle also has velocity v1 both the particle should have the same velocity along the length of the rod we can conserve the momentum of this system along the length of the rod so along the length of the rod we can conserve the momentum p final is equal to p initial along the rod p final we can write mv1 plus mv1 and p initial we can write mv by root 2 so v1 is equal to v by 2 root 2 now you can see our initial answer from method number 1 was also v by root 2 we have already calculated so let us compare our answer it was initially it was initially we have calculated that velocity will be along the length of the rod and it is v by 2 root 2 and again from this analysis we can see that the velocity should be or must be along the length of the rod for this particle and this is coming out to be v by 2 root 2 we can also find the angular velocity of the rod for rigid body we know that all the points are rotating with the same angular velocity about any other point so this point is performing circular motion or in pure rotation about this point so with respect to this point i am taking this point as a and with respect and this point is b solving with respect to b with respect to b this a is performing circular motion with velocity v by root 2 and angular velocity of this rod omega can be written as this v by root 2 which is perpendicular to this length divided by the distance between the two and this is the same omega which we calculated using the conservation of angular momentum omega is v by root 2 l and from here also omega is v by root 2 l so this is the method number two to solve this problem